Greetings and God bless you. And welcome to the Stretching Far and Wide Talk Show Program. I'm your host, Dr. Barbara Jackman. And I'm your host, Dr. Dwayne Barnes. Amen. And today we have in the studio with us two young men that are doing some great things in the community. And so our topic today is youth in the community. We have with us Brother Aaron Hinton, who is the president and CEO of Deuces. And we also have with us Elder Michael Gross from First Baptist Full Gospel, who is also the founder of a nonprofit, Walk by Faith. Amen. We're going to have a word of prayer, uh, Dr. Bonds, and then we will interview our guests. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you thanking you, Lord, for this time. We thank you for these young men, Lord, who are going out into the community because they care. We thank you, Lord, for all the work that they do. So we pray for encouragement, Lord. We pray for strength, and we just continue ask you, Lord, to look over them and to give them the encouragement that they will definitely need to continue their work. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Brother Aaron Hitton, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Amen. amen. It's a blessing to hear uh, what you're doing in the community and also with the youth. So the first thing I'm going to ask you, if you don't mind, is to tell us a little about Aaron. And also, I would like to know how did you come up with this name, Deuces? Uh, that's actually an interesting story. So first things first, um, so my name is C. Aaron Hinton. The C stands for Clifton, um, which is my first name. But um, ever since I was young, my mother always called me by my middle name. So um, most people who know me by Clifton is either people I went to school with, church with, or work in some type of professional environment with. Um, pretty much everyone else just knows me as Aaron, hence the, you know, C. Aaron Hinton. Amen. Um, and as far as Deuces is concerned, Deuces started back in um, 2009, actually, in June of 2009, when the late, great Michael Jackson passed away. Um, I would listen countless hours to his song, you know, uh, all I want to say is that they don't really care about us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Man in the Mirror, you know, was always one of my favorite songs. And I used to think, like, you know, well, what can I do, you know, to make a change in the world? And um, that's when we came up with the... A group called Do You Actually was what it was called at okay. first. Um, and initially it was supposed to be a men's organization. Mm. Uh, but uh, unfortunately a lot of the men in the community that I was serving were not, I guess, ready at the time. Mm -hmm. um, so we then um, tried to start working with the mothers in the community. Okay. Uh, which unfortunately uh, didn't last very long because a lot of the mothers in our community are single parents, um, dealing with, you know, single parent households. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they were just too busy. So um, around 2012, July of 2012, when Bloomberg uh, was still our mayor at the time, okay. he started cutting a lot of the after school programming and youth programming inside um, our community. And I just kind of felt like it was a setup, you know. Wow. And it was like, you know, well, what are our young people going to do if they have no community centers, they have no after-school programming, you know, quite naturally they're going to hit the streets mm. and get into a lot of trouble. So at that point, I started targeting young people and just trying to find them, you know, randomly on the street and giving them positive and productive things to do. And um, so in 2012, we um, began working with young people and we never um, turned back since. And then around 2014, when we went to get incorporated, we found out that the name Do You was already taken. Oh, okay. <laughs> so um, we started thinking, well, we didn't want to get rid of, you know, Do You because that was just such a big part of what okay. we were doing because it's not about what you do, but how you do it, right. you know? And um, before that, when you heard Do You in, in the um, community, it was always a negative connotation. Mm. Like, people never really found anything positive with it. So we were doing so much positive work, I didn't want to lose the name. So we just kept the letters D and U. First it was D-Y, but we found out that there was not many acronyms that you could okay. find with D-Y. And then when I looked with D and U, we seen deuces. And I was like, well, how could that fit? So initially it was going to be Do You Education and Community Empowerment Services. But education and community was just so cliche. Mm. So I said, you know what? Enlightenment trumps education because wisdom beats smarts any day. Okay. And culture trumps community because that's something that we lack in our community, okay. a sense of culture, where we come from. And I think that we need to be more empowered culturally. So hence the name Deuces do use enlightenment and cultural empowerment services. Amen. 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 Dr. Bonds. 
Yeah, excuse me for the phone. Um, I've worked with you, and I had the pleasure of seeing you um, work with these youth. One of the things, though, I would like to know, what keeps you going at those times when you don't get the participation? Because you're dealing with um, youth, and sometimes you need the participate, participation with the children. What do you do? What keeps you going when those youth, their, their parents are not involved or you can't get cooperation from the community? Because sometimes being a community organization, it can become discouraging when you're not getting the cooperation of others. What keeps you going? Um, that's actually a fact. Um, and it has happened a lot of times where um, I started getting discouraged in the work because I felt like, you know, a lot of doors, you would think that doors would open a lot with the work that we're doing, but you'll be surprised at um, how many people thrive on the chaos. <laughs> so um, a lot of doors do close. But what I learned was um, the dedication that the young people themselves have. Um, they make a way, you know what I mean? Like we do what we want to do, you know, when we want to do it. And I found that these young people like coming to the program. They really enjoy it. I mean, now that we have ways of communicating outside of just using the telephone, where, you know, back in the day the telephone was used, hello, how are you, goodbye. Now you can do everything on a cell phone, you know, and there's so many different ways of communicating, um, i.e. Facebook, Twitter, you know, Instagram. And this is all the, all the methods that these young people are using. So I'll get young people in my inbox all the time or in the DM, hey, what are we doing today? Or what's going on? Or, you know, so that kind of keeps me going. And then one time I was on Instagram and I seen a picture um, of <laughs> uh, Mufasa and Simba from The Lion King. Mm -hmm. And in the caption, they call them memes when they take a picture and then they write a caption in it. And the caption, it's Mufasa saying to Simba, um, many times I wanted to give up, but then I had to think of who I was letting down. And I realized that one of the biggest um, resistances that I had when I started this was the community thought that I was very inconsistent. And that's why a lot of people didn't want to help me because they thought that this was just a wild-eyed theory and a wild-eyed idea and that I wouldn't be consistent enough to follow through. So um, I, just, I guess I just had to prove everybody wrong and we're still here going strong. Amen. I want to read your mission uh, statement here. Um, what you do. It says our mission, our model, and our goals are all the same. To save our youth, save our street, squash the beef, and to increase the peace. I like that. Not only in Bronzeville, but in other undeserved communities as well. Not only does this make uh, for a catchy phrase, but each of these mission statements uh, sorry, each of these missions operate as a separate but equally important campaign. Your model is very powerful. Um, I would like for you to share with those who's tuning in um, how they can become a part of what you're offering. And also, you know, there are some, as you said, that contact you. For those who don't know how to contact you, how can they contact you? Okay, so like we said, so Save Our Youth, Save Our Streets, Squash the Beef, and Increase the Peace was mm. all, um, they are separate campaigns. Um, so first things first, I just want to quickly explain what the campaigns are, okay. and then I'll explain exactly how you can get okay. involved. Amen. Um, so Save Our Youth is primarily based on um, our after-school program, which we call the Mannies, Nannies, and Grannies mm. after-school program. And that's where we... Um, get young teenage mothers and fathers along with nurturing elders in the community to um, provide an educational and well-monitored um, environment filled with positive energy to teach them Economic Awareness 101, which is a course that I made up myself, um, Economic Awareness 101, because that's one thing that we don't really have much of in our um, community, um, how economy works and how we can be a thriving part in said economy. Um, and <clears throat> we also do talent appreciation because that's something, that's actually how we target the young people okay. based on their talents. Um, a lot of them like to sing, dance, rap, okay. uh, you know, whatever. And we just use those types of things to, to engage them more. Um, and Save Our Streets is basically, we found that um, a lot of the young people in our community are not finishing school. Okay. But it's not because they're not capable or because they don't really have it. What we find in our studies show is that a lot of young people in our community don't finish school because half of them can't get to or from school safely. 
So if you can't even make it to the school building, how are you going to even attend class and pass, you know? So which rolls kind of into the squash the beef and increase the mm -hmm. peace type thing, you know? Because, um, yeah, yeah and, and my methods, sometimes people feel a bit unorthodox, but, you know, I look at it like this. Gang bangers and drug dealers and everyone else will grab the kids off the street, so why can't yeah. someone who's doing something positive do the same thing, Amen. you know? Amen. Amen. So... Oh, and oh, how, how can you we, get it? Yes. Right. So, um, so ultimately, um, basically the thing is that we're tired of seeing Brownsville and East New York portrayed in the media as some type of war zone where right. only savages live. Um, our message to the world is that lots of decent people reside here, and just because everyone will not ultimately make it out of the hood doesn't mean that there aren't people in the hood that want to see it be better and make it better themselves. Um, so, um, for information on how to join, you could either contact myself, um, by phone, um, 347 589 or our email, which is we care that you care at gmail.com. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So we'll reiterate that information yeah. um, as we go along in the program. So, Brother Aaron, we thank you for being with us. Thank you. God man. bless you for the work that you're thank doing. You, Amen. Yes. Amen. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back. We're back now with our other guest is Elder Michael Matthew Gross, founder of Walk by Faith, a nonprofit organization. As we continue our topic on the youth in the community, we would like Matthew Elder to tell us a little about his organization and what he's doing. Well, thank you, um, for Dr. Jaffe and Dr. Barnes for having me on your show this morning. Um, well, the show. Uh, the organization of Walk by Faith. It started in uh, roughly about six years ago. Um, we were dealing primarily with um, children that had autism. And it came about because one of my friends has a son that has autism. Mm -hmm. and so I was kind of like new to the you know autism, what it's about. So we did a fashion show in um, Brooklyn College. And we partnered with Autism Speaks. We raised um, funds for the organization. So that's kind of like how it started. But now we branched out to more doing um, social justice issues. So uh, probably about like about four years ago, so we did a press conference on the steps of City Hall in regards to human trafficking. Right. And um, so that was like a big topic that, you know, I was passionate about. And so now we're just, you know, helping our community, mainly more to kind of switch as far as we're not doing too much with the uh, autism or disability, but now with um, social justice. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah, that's something that I'm really uh, passionate about. With mm -hmm. social justice. Yeah. Amen. Well, I've known Elder Gross um, for quite some years. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. He came into Community Bible Institute mm -hmm. in seminary with his mother. Yeah. Um, and he was so gun ho about uh, being able to learn the Word of God. Yeah. And at that time, I don't even think we had a youth program available to put him in. So we put <laughs> him in with our adults. Right. I believe it was uh, Christian Growth and Development. Yeah. Amen. And so I've got to know him through the Bible school. Amen. And with him being able to, you know, uh, go forth in his Christian education. Um, I know that he became a minister at a very young age. He began preaching the word of God at a very young age. I'm now receiving um, inboxes, a message from him in reference to his walks. Mm -hmm. You're doing yeah. tell us. Um, about the, the faith walks that you're doing and how you're getting the youth involved uh, in this prayer walks that you're you're doing. Yeah, well, um, God gave me the vision for it last year in um, 2015 for Heal the Land Prayer Walk. Heal the Land. And yes. so, um, based on scripture, and what the um, real incentive was it about, just praying for our community. And um, like our previous guest, Brother Aaron, said, you know, youth is the main core of our community. And we really don't see too much involvement with the youth as far as, like, you know, sometimes helping building up the community because they're like put down and mm -hmm. you know people really don't want to hear what they have to say at some point and so what, we, what I did was to work with um, the police that lives in the, um, the precinct in the area the 73rd precinct and so we just walked praying over um, the youth the gun violence drugs in the area we did it in Brownsville and this year um, in January we did it in Crown Heights 
Yeah. You know, so we walk um, from Mega Evers down to the 71st precinct that was over there. And just um, praying over the area, just praying over the land, mm-hmm. claiming our territory back. Amen. Um, you, you sit on um, the 73rd precinct um, clergy council and you work with the youth. I want to know, does that sometimes can become a conflicting thing because there's a, a distrust sometimes in the community mm-hmm. with our youth mm-hmm. and with our police. Mm-hmm. So how are you able to put that together and continue walking and be victorious in this? Well, that's true. Um, even growing up, some of the youth that I am encounter and talk with, they always have that same distrust where um, if something happens, they don't want to, you know, go to the police. They'd rather, you know, keep it within themselves. And so now with me being on the 73rd um, Pleasure Council for the priests and working with them, Reverend Pettaway, to try to build that relationship back with the community and the police. Um, they tell me like years ago there was a time where you know the police in the community had a strong bond, uh-huh. but you know now it seems like that bond has been ripped. Okay. So um, working with the youth, they do um, you know national night out each year right. with the precincts, and it's just getting that involvement back. Um, having some of them come to the church, speak to the youth, tell them you know what they do so that they could you know see their face on a regular basis and build that you know trust back up with the police. Amen. Uh, Elder Gross, you have also authored a book. Yeah. I got blood on me. Yeah. Amen. Tell us a little bit of, a little bit about the book you wrote and why you chose that topic. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, talking about the blood of Jesus, that's yeah. something I love. <laughs> that's something I love. And it's um, I got blood on me. Fifty devotional readings and prayers. Okay. And so um, each devotion in the book is just a reminder how, how powerful God love is for us. And as we coming up on um, Good Friday, what greater love that he gave to, you know, send his son just to die for us. Amen. And so um, God gave me that one day. I was just in a dream sleep, and I just saw um, the title. And the title, um, the cover of the book just has um, Jesus on the blood. Um, Jesus on the cross, and the blood just coming down his body. Amen. And there's a crowd of people just standing around the cross, and the blood just flowing on him. Amen. And so just a powerful reminder that no matter what we do, no matter where we go in our life, Jesus still loves us. You know, we could be the worst, we could be tore up and jacked up, but yet and still he loves us. Amen. Amen. Yeah, so that was just a constant reminder. Amen. With all that you're doing in the community and with the youth uh, in the community, what do you see yourself doing going forth? What are some some things you plan to do future-wise when it comes to the community? Um, well, just more involvement. Um, I really plan on praying on it more as far as like getting involved as um, like an elected official and within the area. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> within it. Yeah. So now um, I go to school now, but I go to school from business administration. So after that, I'm gonna take up on public policy and just you know get mm-hmm. to know you know the ropes behind everything. Yeah. yeah. But that's what I see myself as. You know, God is just a passion. Something I wake up in the morning and just love to do. And so. Yeah. And that it will be a wonderful thing to have young elected officials mm-hmm. and, um, that uh, is involved in the community and know how important it is for youth to be involved in the community. Yes. So we bless God for that and placing that on your heart. Amen. 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 Yes, it is. You know, it, it, we were just talking today and part of it was um, about our youth in the community and us being a, a ministry that goes out in the community. So one of the things, it is so good to see you and Brother Aaron Mm -hmm. going out into this community because what you're doing is letting the youth know that there's more to life than just wanting to be a rapper. And there's more to life than just wanting to be an athlete. And I don't take away from those things, but they need exposure to more. And that is one of the things I, you know, wanted to say I compliment you on. Amen. Um, We want you to be able to share with those who are tuning in, especially Mm -hmm. the young people, um, if they want to be involved in what you are doing, how they can connect with you. Um, Well, I'm on Facebook, um, Michael Matthew Gross. So um, trust me on Facebook. um, (laughs) Through email, walk by faith, the number two, the letter C, five, seven at gmail.com. And um, Instagram, all the social sites. um, You can search my name, Michael Gross, and I'm able to be on there to also um if it's okay to wanted to add in um on may 7th i'm working with uh pastor terry lee and um he, we doing he does it every year this is the 18th year where they do a prayer on the white house lawn 
Okay. Yeah, and so um, I was in Washington just on um, this past Wednesday. So we're organizing and planning and you know strategizing that out. Okay. Yeah. So um, on May seventh, those who, who can and will is open up to everyone. May seventh, we're gonna be on our White House lawn just praying for okay. our community, and we know you know okay. the government needs prayer, the nation, our president. Mm. You know that you can't stop praying. You can't Amen. stop praying enough. So it's May seventh from ten a.m. to six uh, p.m. Amen. So all day we'll be on the White Amen. House lawn on the White House lawn prayer, yeah. May 7th, amen. So those young people who would like to be a part of that prayer service, you can contact Elder Gross, as he says, through his Facebook page, yes, Facebook page. Amen. amen, or his email, so that you can be involved in prayer on the White House lawn. If there's any place that we need yes. prayer mm -hmm. right now, it is on the White yes. House lawn, amen. So we bless God for that uh, event that is coming amen. up, amen. Yes. I just wanted to again say thank you for coming. And thank you. Uh, it is, um, it's such a pleasure. I get excited when I see youth in the community, mm -hmm. you know, because it is so important. Not only you're a youth, you're a man of God. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that our youth needs is to see those young people of God yes. who are passionate about the things of God stepping out and saying, listen, you know, we're here for you, you yes. know, because sometimes, you know, they don't feel that no one cares. It's like um, Brother Aaron said, does anyone care about me? And mm -hmm. one of the things is, yes, there's the youth and you are one of them is Brother Aaron and I. And we, again, we are so happy to have you. And thank God. And I just pray more blessings on you and your ministry. Amen. Thank you. Amen. We bless God for what he's doing in your life. Thank Amen. you. Amen. May you continue to go forth in Jesus' name. Thank you. I appreciate Amen. you having me. Thank Amen. you. God bless you. We'll have some announcements, and then we'll be right back to continue Stretching Far and Wide Ministry Talk Show. By way of announcements, on Wednesday, March 16th, Red Hook East Tenet Association meeting will be held at 6.30 p.m. at 167 Bush Street, Room 1B. On Saturday, March 19th, our monthly service held at the Bushwick Home and Rehabili Rehabil Rehabilitation Center located at 50 Sheffield Street, the third floor at 2 p.m. On Sunday, March the 20th, Stretching Far and Wide talk show will host a segment with Just Cruising Biker Club and our guest by Skype will be Metropolitan Archbishop Marlon Kreft at 12 p.m. On Saturday, March 26, Stretch and Far and Wide Global Ministry will set up a prayer station on the corner of Lorraine and Columbia from 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. We will also be distributing resurrection baskets to the children. It's on a first come, first serve basis. Also, join our host, Minister Damon Henry, on Block Talk Radio. Call in number is 714-868-0763 every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Join us for worship here at Stretch and Far NY Global Ministry, 382 Hamilton Avenue, every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. We also invite you to be on our prayer line every Sunday morning, Wednesday morning, and Friday morning from 6 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. The conference line is 712-432-6100. Enter the passcode number 65045687 and then press 1 to confirm. Thank you and God bless you. We once again have our two guests here and we want to ask them a, one of the questions that we want to ask them. If you was to speak to the youth, let me ask you. What would you say to that youth who has seemed to have lost hope or is struggling? What would you bring to them? I'm going to start with you, Elder. Okay. Well, um, one of the main scriptures that I live by is um, Romans 8, which says, you know, if God be for us, who could be against us? And one of the things that we have to remember is that 
we living in a society where there's a bunch of noise, distraction. We're bombarded by, you know, uh, social media. Everything's going crazy. But yet and still, we have to keep God the focus and keep God first. So for any young person that's listening, no matter what vision, what dream you have and you feel discovers about it, just keep on praying because God, if God gave it to you, God's going to provide the provision for the vision. And simply just keep God first. That's the best thing I can say. Um, well, I mean, I basically feel the same exact way. Um, what I would tell young people now today is that it's, it's, it's a very uh, weird world that we live in now. I mean, the Earth's population is 9 billion plus, yet every single one of us feel like we're living alone here. And Deuces is a place where we have a plutonic family, a plutonic family, you know what I mean? Um, so a lot of the young people that I encounter in the street are those same young people who just have no idea where to go or how to get there. And um, I just tell them all, like, you know, come, come join us. Nowadays, it's not all about what you know, but who you know. And, you know, as long as you hanging out with the right crowd, you'll get in the right places. Amen. Amen. Once again, we bless God for our guests on uh, this afternoon. Amen. Our elder um, um, Gross. Amen. And our brother Hinton. Amen. For what they are doing in the community and how God is using them to work with the youth. Uh, we um, just want our viewers and those who are tuning in to know that it's very important for our youth to be involved in the community amen and being involved in the community just doesn't help to develop them and and their lives and their character but it also helped them to be a part of society in a very positive way and so we i just want to personally say thank you Amen. Just personally to say thank you. Um, I remember when I was growing up and, you know, there was not a lot of programs for us as uh, in the youth. But then again, we did not have as many pressure, uh, much pressure as the young people have today. Amen. We could go in the park and play skelly and um, hopscotch. And, you know, the children nowadays just don't do much of that. If anything, um, a lot of them are maybe sitting in the house. Amen. Playing video games <laughs> are on the computer. Amen. On the computer. So in the winter months, how is it? I just want to ask you all that you are able to get the youth together. Is it hard for you to get them together in the winter months when it's cold outside? Um, well, honestly, um, the winter is where we, we try to do most of our work. You know what I mean? Because um, what happens, I find, is that people looking for shelter in the winter. So a lot of the times we find ourselves cramped up indoors. And then finally when the weather breaks and it gets warm, whatever animosity or whatever pain or whatever struggles we've been going through that whole time, we come out with, you know what I mean? And then you run into those same old problems that you may have ran away from along with the cold in the winter. And that's why we seem to see like such a, a, a violent spring, you know, um, in the warmer days. Um, so that's why we do do a lot of our work in the winter. And, and one last thing, um, I have this equation that hunger plus ignorance equals violence. Mm. So when a person is hungry and they don't really have a way to express themselves or how they feel, they tend to be uh, violent. So what we do is we feed the mind and we feed the stomach at the same time. Amen. And that's how we you know, try to keep them off the streets Amen. in the winter. Amen. So once again, we want to thank you for being in the studio with us. Amen. Um, at this time, if Elder Gross don't mind, we'll ask him to pray us out of this segment and, and definitely focus on the youth in the community. Amen. Father God, we just want to say thank you, God, for this day, oh God. Thank you for this ministry, oh God, and thank you for your purpose and having us here today, oh God. Father God, I just continue to pray for the youth, oh God. Continue to pray for this community, this nation at large, oh God. We continue to pray that your blood will be upon every young person, Father God. Your blood is upon this neighborhood, oh God. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, oh God. We thank you for your work, the work that Brother Hinton is doing, oh God. And we thank you for how you allowed us to be here, oh God, just to be as witnesses to the young people, oh God, to bring them 
them hope in this dying land, oh God. We thank you for this ministry, Dr. Jackman, Dr. Barnes, oh God. Continue to bless them and bring them forward into what you have them to do, Father God. You ordain this purpose, you ordain this moment, oh God, and for this we give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Once again, we thank you for tuning in to Stretching Far and Wide Talk Show. And remember, we are stretching far and wide across the globe, and we're doing it in the shape of the cross. We are not just a church in the community, but we're one that cares for the community. God bless you. God bless you.